So in this problem, we have a tank that's four on the uh, it's rectangular uh, prism shape, and the width is four meters, the length is eight meters, and the height of the tank is two meters. The liquid inside is kerosene, which has a density of 820 kilograms per meters cubed, and we have only up to 1.5 meters of kerosene in the tank, so it's not it's not completely full. The two things we're going to look at are hydrostatic pressure on the bottom and hydrostatic force on the bottom. And uh, I like looking at both of these at the same time because then it helps us see the relationship between pressure and force um, in the equations and then also just within the picture. So for um, to start this, we need to think about all the different relationships we have here. So. Uh, we have that pressure, as you could read in the book, is equal to force divided by area, which that also gives us that force then would be equal to pressure times area. And so if we're finding just pressure, then we would use just the pressure equation. If we're finding force, we need to find pressure and then multiply it by area. And so we jump between the two as needed. But we know from looking at the equations in uh, intro and the book and everything that the pressure equation, we can actually write that as rho times G times D, where rho is density of whatever the liquid is, G is gravity, and D is the depth of where we're at in the liquid, and so the uh, pressure pertains to that depth. And, and so area, we saw, gets uh, divided into um, the volume, which is part of the pressure equation, and, and that's why area kind of disappears here. That's shown in the intro. So we have this rho times g times d. And we're going to figure out what are rho, g, and d in this problem. So since rho is the density of the liquid, that's something we either have to look up or be given. In this case, it's kerosene, and they give it as 820 kilograms per meters cubed. And so I'm going to pull that in here for my pressure. So P equals 820 kilograms per meters cubed. And then gravity, we know that to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, in terms of the depth, because they say so these are multiplying, because um, we're looking at hydrostatic pressure on the bottom, it gives us a very distinct depth. So we're sitting right at the bottom. Now in this case, we're not looking at the depth of the entire tank because we only care about the depth of the um, liquid that we're in. And also, um, as stated in the intro, we're just doing, um, we're not worrying about atmospheric pressure in any of these. We're just worried about the pressure in the liquid um, for all of our problems. So uh, disregarding atmospheric pressure, the pressure that relates to us is just 1.5 meters in depth because it's not a full tank. And so our depth is 1.5 meters. So if we multiply this using our calculator, and just multiply it straight across, we'll get 12,054. And looking at our units, and I always highly suggest writing units on everything because that, for me personally, is how I remember or see what I've forgotten. Maybe I've forgotten a component. My units will help me see that. So notice that uh, two of the meters cancel out with one meter underneath and we're left with so uh, a kilogram on top, a meter on the bottom, and the second squared on the bottom. So we get kilogram per meters times second squared. And just some side notes here about we have a, a new um, a, a, a new unit called um, Pascal. And the Pascal is equal to one Newton over meters squared. So let's do a little scratch work over here because this is a new unit. So I want to show you where it comes from. So it's one Newton over meters per squared and one Newton was equal to kilogram 
times meters over seconds squared. So if we take that Pascal and put in the units for Newtons and then divide that by meters squared and just do our multiplying by the reciprocal that we would do with any arithmetic, we get kilograms times meters over seconds squared times one over meters squared. And notice one of the meters will divide into each other and we're left with kilograms over seconds squared times meters, which is what we got for our unit on this 12,054. So the Pascal, and we'll see the relationship even better for part B, is one Newton divided by, so one Newton per square meter is essentially what it's saying. And, um, and so that's what we got. We got that the pressure uh, per square meter um, is this many uh, Newtons. And so we call this 12,054 Pascals in capital P little a. Um, but because they're such large numbers, they like to do kilopascals. And so we could actually divide that by a thousand, put 12.054 little k capital P little a is another way to denote, uh, denote that. Now the hydrostatic force on the bottom, if we go back up to our equations, our force was equal to pressure times area. So if we want to look at part B, the hydrostatic force at the bottom, we have force equals pressure times area. So the pressure we already got, that's the number just above. But the area, this is the area at the bottom. And if we go back up to our tank and look, it had a width of 4 and a length of 8. So if we just look at that area it's going to be 4 meters times 8 meters. So our force is equal to 12,000. And I'm going to write out the Pascal um, units again. Instead of the PA, I'm going to put the kilograms per meters times second squared. So 12,054 kilograms, divided, er, kilograms per meters times second squared. And this is all multiplying our 4 meters times 8 meters, which is 32 square meters and that'll be our force. And so let's look at what happens to the numbers and the meters. Um, so I got, when I multiplied this, 385,728. And notice one of the meters divides out, and so we're left with now, we have um, kilogram time meters per second squared. And that's what a Newton is, kilograms times meters per second squared. And so this is the force is actually 385, 728,000 Newtons, which the book will use the scientific notation a lot and you can as well, but I like to just write it out. So it's that many Newtons um, for the hydrostatic force on the bottom. So we can see a relationship here with in part A, I got for pressure, 12,054, and so since Pascals are Newtons per meter squared, I'm going to just write it out like that. And part B, for force, I got 385,728 Newtons. So what you see is since we had 32 um, square meters for our tank, that this force is actually just giving us that total pressure um, at the bottom of the tank there because the pressure was how much per meter squared and then the force was multiplied by how many of those there were and so that gives us the total pressure there. So you can see the relationship between the two. Um, so I think units are a big deal in all of the problems and that should be something you carefully watch.